Hi, in this video I'm going to be analysing the data I got for my search coil experiment to determine the magnetic flux density of that magnet. And also I'll be comparing my final answer to the value of the flux density I got for my current balance data. So if you remember, this was our search coil. I placed it in the field, pulled that out. There was one final measurement I needed to take for my search coil, which was the diameter of the coil so that I could work out the cross-sectional area. Someone had run off with my digital vernier caliper. I've got that back. So what I'm doing in order to measure this is measuring to the midpoint of each side of the coil. The, because it's 5,000 turns, there's a lot of turns there, there's a lot of wire, so it's actually quite thick. So I'm, I'm taking the midpoint, so I'm going to the midpoint of this side to the midpoint of that side and taking that as the diameter. So I'm going to do that first. So what I'm doing is I'm just opening the jaws until uh, it's at the midpoint. Now this is, a, this is measuring to a hundredth of a millimeter. I wouldn't suggest that I'm actually measuring to that level of precision because I'm having to judge this by eye. So I'm going to put this down and try and get the best measurement I can. Since the caliper is displaying that full precision, I will write down that full precision. It's not right to just, um, I, I do, well, it's not that it's not right, but you can just write down the full precision. That's fine to do. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to take a measurement here, so to the midpoint of both. So I make that 9.25 millimetres, I'm going to put that into my spreadsheet. So this is uh, the table that I'm using for the search coil data and you can see what I've got if I zoom in. That's the current balance data, I'll be comparing my results there. If I zoom in a little bit closer so you can see it more clearly, this is the search coil. So I'm putting my diameter in here in millimetres, so I just put in the raw value that was 9.25 and this automatically calculates the cross-sectional area in meters squared. So if you can see that formula, what's actually happening is I'm taking pi, multiplying by the diameter divided by a thousand, so that's my conversion, into meters, squaring it, and divided by four. So the diameter is squared, not pi, obviously. So that's my cross-sectional area. Okay, so that's that measurement and that small calculation there. If you remember what we're actually trying to do here is I got a printout on my picoscope and using that I'm going to try and estimate or calculate the area under that peak. I pulled the search coin out sh very quickly to give me as sharp a peak as possible so that it can be estimated as a triangle. Obviously there is, there is some curvature here, here you can see a bit of curvature at the top. We're going to assume it's a triangle and work on that basis. The area under gives me EMF times delta T. And if we use Faraday's law, we can actually arrive at this relationship where, if I just pull that over there, the change in flux density, since it's changing to zero once the search coil is out of the field, assuming it's zero, then we can say that delta B is equal to the value of the flux density of the magnet. And that's equal to the EMF times delta T over N times A. This is the area under the, coil, under the, the peak that we got. And this is the number of turns. This is the cross-sectional area. So that's what we're doing essentially in the spreadsheet. And I'll show you how that manifests itself over here. So I'm going to be putting in two time values. So I'm going to measure the time for the base of my peak and then the final time of the base of my peak. So that's T1 and T2 respectively. They'll go into there. This will calculate delta T, giving me the base of the triangle. So that's just simply that, take away that. And then I need to write down what my minimum voltage is. So what voltage were, was the uh, what voltage, from what voltage was it increasing from? You'll see that in a minute I'm going to exclude the very bottom of the peak where you've got quite a lot of curvature so that I get a better estimate of a triangle. So I write that in here and I can just click on the oscilloscope output 
and that will actually tell me what the voltage is at that point. So I'll do that. And then my maximum, so that's obviously the peak voltage there. Okay, then N I input here is 5,000 turns, if you remember. D we've done, cross-sectional area. And so then we're down here for B. Okay, so it's the area of a triangle is half base times height, so 0 0.5 times delta T times V max mi minus V min, so base times height, and then divided by N and divided by the cross-sectional area. So that's how the formula is actually working. It's just like you know, I showed you over there in the equation, quite straightforward. So let's see what happens when we actually put the data in. This was the oscilloscope output that we got. I saved that file. We can now actually analyze that by clicking on to various points to take some readings. So if you look at this, there's that quite pronounced curvature here. It's also a bit noisy with those steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and take some readings back there. I'll just use this 0.519 volts line as a reference point. So I'm going to click around here and try and get the same voltage value before and after. I'll get the corresponding times for that. So that's going to give me V min and it's going to give me T1 and T2. And then I click on the peak and that gives me the maximum voltage. So let's actually try doing that now. So I'm trying to click, get a value close to 0.519. Okay, so that one looks okay. This is a time of 1.351825 and 516 millivolts, so that's 0.516 volts. So I'm going to switch over to my. Just quickly write that down. I'm going to switch over to my spreadsheet and put those data in. Okay, so T1 was 1.3. Five one eight two five. There's obviously a great deal of precision in that, and I, I, I'm not obviously gonna, not going to assume that I've got that high precision value for my final output because the diameter is going to be a real limit here. Okay, and the v minimum voltage was point five one six two because it's five hundred sixteen point two millivolts okay now we do the same thing over here so I need to make sure I get the same voltage reading over on this side of the peak so looking for 516.2 there we are okay so that's 1.376824 so I just need to write that in there it's 1.37 oops 7.68 Okay, so I'm getting a change in time of 0 0.05 seconds there. And now we just need to take the maximum voltage reading. So go over here and click on the, click on the peak. That's 3.199 volts. So I put this in here, 3.199. And there we go. So what we've got here, uh, the... The, the value of the magnetic flux density, 0 0.200, so that's 200 milliteslas. This is working out the average, so you, obviously you'd want to repeat and average this, so you can put the search coil in again, get another peak, analyse that peak, you can put that data in there. I haven't done that on this occasion, but you could do that to get an average. This works out the average automatically. And this is a percentage difference calculation, so this is comparing my 200 millitesla result with what I got over on the current balance. If we just move over there now, we can have a look at that. So on my current balance, I got 206 millitesla. So that's comparing very, very well. We get a 3.1% percentage difference. So that's really close. So that actually gives me a lot of confidence in both of these experiments, give me an accurate result. Hopefully. So yeah, there we go. That's the analysis of the search coil and I've compared it with the current balance data. So you, if you've watched that video, have a, um, 
you can now see some corroboration. If you haven't seen that video, you can check that video out. I'll put the video link up on the on this video, and uh, so you could see that if you want to see how that experiment is done.